right so this is a free response question free response question that has a lot of good elements to it but the basic thing that we're going to do here is a hypothesis test um, using a p-value okay um, and this makes us pretty happy all right because this is going to bring in our calculator and allow us to do some different things to kind of go in the general overview all right so it is generally believed that nearsightedness affects about 12% of children okay so 12% of children is going to be really important because this is going to make my P equal to 12% and my children is going to be the population, right? So the school district gives vision tests to 133 incoming kindergarten children. Okay, so 133 then is my sample size N. Okay, and so now what we want to do is describe the sampling distribution model for the sample proportion by naming the model and telling its mean and standard deviation. Okay, so <clears throat> what it's really asking for is um, use normal model. That's the only model we have. Okay, so that's describe the sampling distribution. Okay, by naming the model and telling its mean and standard deviation. All right, so if I use the normal model, by the central limit theorem, I'm going to assume that my sample is near, P is near to 0.12, right? Okay, because that's nearsightedness affects about 12%. So there's my mean, right? It's going to be in the center of my model. And then for my standard deviation, what I need to do is take the square root of uh, the 12, my P, 1 minus 12, okay 1 minus P all over 133 my N okay and I need a value for that so I'm gonna pull up my calculator uh, and clear all this wonderful stuff out and now I'm gonna take the uh, square root of 12 times 1 minus 12 don't forget the parentheses divided by 133 Okay, and then I kind of back out of that and hit enter, and I get a standard deviation of 0 0.028. Okay, so that makes me pretty happy. All right, so I'm kind of come over here, and oops, and I've got 0 0.028. All right, so there's my standard deviation. Justify your answer. Well, one, I have to assume independence. And if you're looking at incoming kindergarten children, probably no issue with independence, so that's fine. Two, um, your sample size has to be less than 10% of the population. If I multiply this by 10, I get 1,300. I'm guessing there are more than 1,300 children uh, in the world in the United States, so that's good. Three is my randomness condition. Randomness. Okay. And so we can assume that they were, it's all incoming children, but if the children are independent, there's probably some randomness there. I might feel a little better if it said they took a random sample of incoming kindergarten children, um, <coughs> or I had some idea about the um, incoming children being representative, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and say that that's okay, right? And then four, certainly last but not least, I need uh, at least 10 successes and at least 10 failures, all right? And so uh, is N times P greater than 10? And so you've got 0 0.12 uh, times 133 which is over 10% of the population, so you're looking at about 15, so that works. And then you have uh, n times 1 minus p has to be greater than 10, um, and so you have uh, 1 minus 0 0.12 times 133, and that's definitely going to be greater than 10. I mean, you can do it in your calculator if you want, but that's definitely going to be greater than 10. Okay, so that's our justification. Our justification is the four assumptions. I can use the normal model 
and that's my center. Now for B, I want you to sketch and clearly label the model. Well, my normal model, I'm going to draw my line, I'm going to go up, down, give myself a nice bell curve. In the center goes my 0.12, <laughs> and then I'm just going to round this to 3 just to make the calculation a lot easier. So first standard deviation is going to be 0.15. Second standard deviation is going to be uh, 0.18, right? If I go down, I have 0.09. If I go down one more, I have 0.06. Okay, so there's my clearly labeled model with my center and my standard deviations. All right, so now C, what is the probability that in this group, over 15% of the children will be found to be nearsighted. So for C now, okay, so this was A, this is B, and now this is C, right? So what I need to do is a p-value test, right? P-value um, test, all right? So now I need my calculator. So I'm going to go to calculator. I'm going to hit the all-powerful stat button. I'm going to scroll over to test, and now I need a one proportion Z test, right? Because I'm using the normal model, so I have a Z score that I'm looking at. It's a one proportion Z test, so it's number five. Okay, now my null hypothesis is that I'm at 12 in the center. Um, for my X, I don't act, oh, it says 15%, right? So I need 0.15 of the 133. And I hit enter. Now, you can't leave the 95 in there, right? So you're just going to round that up to 20 kids. Okay, that's got to be an integer. If that's not an integer, you're uh, in bad shape. Okay. Um, we don't have any reason to believe it's going to be higher or lower. I mean, obviously, we might test for it being higher, but we just want to know what's the probability that in a group, 15% uh, of the children will be found. So we're going to use this one, uh, the not equal to, because that's sort of our default setting. And now I'm going to calculate it, right? And so when I calculate it, uh, my p-value ends up being 0.28, okay, um, with a p-hat of 15. 0.15, which is exactly what we what we wanted, right? Um, if you do the test again, right, and you're like, hey, what if I did the test and instead of doing not equal to, what if I just was concerned about them being greater than, right? What if that was my big concern? And I hit calculate. Well, then your p-value is half as big because you're only looking at one tail, and so it's half as big, and so you get 14, okay? So depending upon how you wrote your hypothesis test, your p-value is going to be equal to 0.28 for p-alternative, not equal to 0.12, and then your p-value would be equal to 0.14 if your alternative hypothesis um, was greater than, sorry, oh no, great, greater than. 0.12. This is terrible. I, I, this is a short video, so I'm gonna erase that so that I can do a better job. Your p alternative is greater than 0.12. Okay, so for, probably here you want to state the hypothesis. Okay, and then do your p value test like I just did. All right. Now this means that we would fail to reject we fail to reject um, blah 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 okay uh, but it just wanted the probability it didn't ask for a conclusion so we're going to stop this problem uh, right here and go on to uh, some more hypothesis testing